kind of a, I talk with my hands. I talk big with my hands. I talk small with my hands where I'm trying to make a point. Um, that's definitely something that I do. But obviously not being to the point where I'm like, right around and like, you know, you don't want to be kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Scattered? Distracting. Distracting, exactly. So the point against distracting, and that was the final point for me, so say, thank you for saying that. All of these can be used, you have to find out what works for you. So some people say, don't talk with your hands, and talk and walk around with your hands behind your back. Again, at the end of the day, while that might work for some people, you don't want to seem rehearsed, right? Like, too rehearsed. You don't want to seem that you're kind of on the end of the spectrum, like robot type. But you also don't want any of your eye contact, movement, tone, gesturing to be distracting from the point, which is that you want to share the information, you want the information to be clear, you want the, obviously, intent to match the impact. So you have to kind of balance that out. And again, practicing in front of friends will help you with that so that they can tell you, like, do, do you realize that you always like tug at your hair when you're talking? Because again, those things will, oh, okay, like, I should probably stop doing that. Your tone. So again, finding, finding your outside voice, but not yelling, because there's a difference, right? So some people, like obviously you're gonna to be told to project your voice and, and you're speaking with large groups, if I'm correct, most of the time. So you wanna be able to project your voice, but there's a very big difference between projecting and yelling at folks. And again, if you yell, that's all people, you know, why was she yelling? That's all they're gonna remember. Like, why, why was that was distracting? I couldn't focus on anything she was saying because I just did not want her to yell at me anymore. So again, you have to find that balance and figure out what that looks like for you. Uh, gesturing. So again, I mentioned that a little bit. The hands, the finding a place that's comfortable for you. Um, I'm comfortable, I'm pretty comfortable with public speaking, so I don't mind that I talk a lot with my hands. Hopefully it's not distracting for anyone. But I think I found a pretty good balance, that it's not like, why is she like, why are her hands all crazy and loud? And I hope it's not coming off that way at least. So all of these things, again, are going to be really different for everyone. And they all can be distractions if used inappropriately. And it really is something that you will get to know as you get more comfortable. Don't take it as a failure if any of these things don't work out the first time, right? So if you realize that your outside voice is a little bit too outside and you take it in a notch, that's okay, because then you'll just learn for the next time. Your word choice is really important. That's one that I did forget to put up, the, up here. So some people will focus on, I'm sure you've heard this before, so in, in like, uh, I forget what course it is, maybe Communication 101, or I'm not sure what the course name is. So, I'm sure you've already picked up on it, but I am one of those people also that says, um, in my presentation when I'm taking a second to think, it is something I'm working on. I'm not perfect, like I mentioned, right? Again, I hope, though, that you'll find that the presentation is still helpful, and some of those things don't make or break your presentation. I say that to you because we all have one of those things, like, oh, you know, I always do this, but, like, you know, I guess I just can't present. No, that's not what that means. It just means that it's kind of going to be something that you continuously need to check yourself on and work on. So know that your perfection is not going to happen. There's always going to be something that you kind of stumble over. Um, and maybe maybe not, right? Maybe you are perfect. Maybe you're a perfect public speaker. But I doubt it. So again, getting comfortable with that I think is good so that you can overcome the stumbles a lot easier and kind of forgive yourself and move forward. Other people will too, promise. Any questions so far? Okay. Uh, and then jitters are normal. That's something else that I wanted to highlight. Um, you having jitters and being nervous before presentation, I think some people take that as I'm not this is going to be terrible, I'm not going to be good, but again, that's where the cortisol and like the, the stress comes in. That's completely normal. I walked in here and I was a little bit nervous. Because again, it's a judgment. I don't want to be judged. What if, you know, my poof, like what if my hair exposed? Because like, the little thing that's holding my hair together is so tight. What if that happened? That would be so embarrassing. Again, I thought about all of those things, but at the end of the day, if that happened, I would survive. Right? I would not be dead. I, like, nothing would happen. I wouldn't get fired it would be okay, right? So being comfortable with the fact that things will go wrong or may go wrong, 
you might stumble on some words, you might have a couple ums in your presentation, you might not know the answer to a question that someone answers or asks, um, but that's okay. You have to be able to move on from those moments and be comfortable that they will happen so that you don't get stuck there. which is that you have to have fun doing it. Uh, if you're not, or if you really don't want to be there, uh, it will chill. And not only are you doing it wrong, but you probably shouldn't be doing it at all. Because at the end of the day, you won't get the impact, you won't give the impact that you want to. You, you're you not enjoying it, so I guess my question to you would be, if you are doing it and you're not having fun, why are you there? You have to be able to find the fun in it. We talked about in the beginning setting your intention. So what is your intention and any kind of setting is important. I came in here and my intention was to be myself and to share the information that I've learned as I have given speeches and presentations and things like that and either organizations or for training, things, etc. So being myself is important to me and sharing the information that I have is important to me and my experiences. And obviously it being more of a conversation, which it can end up being as much of, but hopefully a discussion at the end. Um, is important, and that was the intention. I want you all to feel comfortable, to get a little bit more comfortable presenting. Um, it's not ever going to be something that I can give you a list of do these 10 things and your presentation will be perfect, because that's not how it works. So hopefully some of the things we've talked about will get you to a comfortable space where you can focus on the fun aspect and focus on the impact and inspiration and all those um, great things that you want to share with students and parents. Leaving off with quotes, I love them. Um, essentially, if you can speak, you can influence. If you can influence, you can change lives. You really could, some of you have already mentioned it, you really could change a life, just a change of life course based on the interaction that you have with some of the students that you'll be meeting and touring and presentations. So again, it doesn't mean, no pressure, right? I mean, it doesn't mean that you're going to make or break anyone's um, life choice. But it does mean that what you say, how you say it, the how personable you are, how authentic you are, and how helpful you are can really be impactful for a lot of these students who are going to come and visit. Impactful for the parents who are nervous about letting their, their children go, right? And being able to see that there are people who know about the university, who are willing to help if asked, is really helpful to that. So, I guess that's why public speaking is obviously important, but also why it should be something that you <coughs> get more comfortable with so that you can get to a place where you're really focusing on the inspiration and the impact and the fun, um, which will show through and which will help people um, make their decisions about whether to come here. That's all I got. Any questions for me or, or tips, I guess, from each other? So I'm sure some of you maybe potentially either enjoy public speaking or have done it a lot. So I guess are there tips from the crowd or things that you are still wondering about that maybe I didn't talk, talk about that we could probably have a conversation about now? Yeah, I don't know. Um, one thing I wanted to like, add to one of your tips was uh, facial expressions, like making sure we have like, a friendly and welcoming vibe mm -hmm. and like smiling. Yeah. Something I've been told a lot is I have RBI. Or RBF. <laughs> I don't think I have to explain that. Um, I'm not. <laughs> and but yes, it is important to kind of watch that and be mindful of it. Any other questions or tips, concerns? So everybody's like ready to go and like speak now, right? <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. I think that something that I try to do, one, I have to, you have to be able to pay attention to what you're saying. So it's hard sometimes to do both, but again, as you get comfortable with the information you're being given and more comfortable presenting, that will come, that comfort will come. What I try to do, and I actually just did it, is pause. <laughs> we get really nervous, right? And we just want to answer the question really fast, and 
kind of we don't want to seem as confident or like we don't know what we're talking about. So that's where like the, the nervousness is on, right? So that's when you say it because like you're thinking in your head and you're kind of trying to fill the silence. So I've tried pausing. Um, the pause I think makes me uncomfortable, but typically it doesn't make others uncomfortable. Um, so I so I think that that's what I would say in terms of the um. I think that's a really important thing to realize is silence is okay if it's not super long and awkward, you know, but if you if you need a moment to like regroup your thoughts and think for a moment, it's really like a flip on our part. I mean, to them. To us, it feels like forever, but just pausing and like figuring out what your um is, because for some people it's um, for other people they do like a... Like, we, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we see it all with the tours as you practice. Or, like, some people, like, touch their ear. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, like, that's their um. Or when people hold water bottles on tours, like mm -hmm. our ambos, sometimes they'll, like, slap the water bottle as they're talking. <laughs> like that. And it's like, stop that. You know, so it's like figuring out what that little thing is and just pausing it, you know? So I like the whole, the, the know you're weird, embrace it. But then, like, know your um, or whatever mm -hmm. that, that little caveat is. Because it can sometimes be distracting for a tour. You know, oftentimes it's not, but some of those bigger ones, the yeah. movement ones especially, I think are. And making note of those, right? So again, as both Michelle and I were talking, hopefully you've maybe thought, oh, I do this. And jotting those down is important so that, again, you knowing what it is is the first step so that you can address it appropriately and you will catch, like I hear it every time I say yep. it now. So I, I, again, I move on because it's not the end of the world. But I know, okay, that's something I have to like yep. pay attention to. And your TIs too in your um, like third practice can alert you if you want them to, to any little random thing mm -hmm. that might be like that. Just mm -hmm. so we work on it. We're all works in progress. We all do ums, we all do little quirky mm -hmm. things, you know? We yes. do. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna add something because like when me and Angela went out, uh, I always had my hair down and one of my nervous tics is like playing with my hair and she's like, Natalie, like you play with your hair so much. So that's why I always wear my hair up on tour now, because otherwise <laughs> like yeah, I'll just do that all tour. Yeah. Yeah. Oh that's exactly what I was gonna say. For my first comp presentation, I remember mm -hmm. playing with my hair and my yeah. comp professor told me that. Put it up, and ever since I usually have a bun or a braid mm -hmm. or a ponytail. It's, mm -hmm. it's so much easier. You don't think about it because it's not waving in your face. You're gonna, you just take the element out. That's yep. perfect. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. In terms of pausing on tour, a really good way to like have a pause is taking a drink of your water. Most of the time, like you need a break, you need to like refresh your mouth. So taking that drink of water sometimes to you may feel a little bit awkward. Like, oh, I'm taking a little too long. I'm um, doing a little pause. It's like totally okay, like just don't be scared to take the water, have that little pause that generally like works with that also, so. <laughs> Drink the whole water. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I thought of those that Michelle mentioned with moving your hands too, actually both Michelle's, <laughs> moving your hands too much. Um, and so the way I alleviated that is I always make sure I have my water bottle and sometimes I'll just hold it. Yeah. If I can just hold it, I'll hold my hands mm -hmm. still, that way they don't move around so much. And so that was my way of trying to alleviate my own personal too much movement type of thing. So be careful when you have a hydro flask too, because I swung it one swim. time on accident and like thankfully no one is injured, but <laughs> like, it, it can fly out of your hands. So just be careful when you go. Well, anyone hurt on your right? <laughs> That'd be bad. Yeah. It's a whole nother can of worms. <laughs> when I was in college, I realized that one thing I didn't like was people looking at me. Like I would make eye contact with someone and like, instantly forget what I was saying. So whenever I like went up and did like my speech or whatever, I would take my glasses off because I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> and, like I would do the same one and it worked. Like and like my because like one time I went up to my professor was like, why are you taking your glasses off? And I was like, watch. And then my score went up like 15 points. <laughs>